Assalamu alaikum, dear Professor Alwani. Thank you for your visit at the Institute for Islamic Theology and for giving us this interview and this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you. The topic of your talk in our lecture series was countering domestic violence toward a model of harmony in family relations. You are working on this issue more than 15 years now. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. Why did you decide to work on the issue of domestic violence and could you explain briefly what you consider as domestic violence? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First of all, thank you very much for the invitation and allow me to meet with all of you and also with the community here. <coughs> the issue of, of domestic violence really uh, it's, um, started um, in 1990, almost when I arrived to America at that time, uh, I was involved uh, at the masjid, at the mosque um, in Virginia. And uh, of course, as any Muslim woman will uh, be involved with the sisters, with mm -hmm. the children, teaching them uh, teach at Sunday school, Saturday school at the masjid. And um, through that kind of experience, we um, uh, started listening to some of the stories while from the children mm -hmm. uh, themselves uh, complaining about certain issues or things mm -hmm. or the sisters themselves when we uh, meet with them either to uh, as uh, the uh, conversation or having halakha like Islamic circle uh, sitting um, together learning about the Quran and Sunnah and traditions um, and uh, uh, the questions, so we be started receiving some questions from the sisters asking about uh, the, it's more about is it allowed for the husband to um, insult me, for example, mm -hmm. in a way. Uh, and then uh, asking about a specific uh, question if I'm trying to be a good wife for example, mm -hmm. is it okay for me to accept that when the, my husband um, uh, may be spanking me mm -hmm. uh, in a way? So it was more about having that concept in her mind is to make her a good wife. Uh, so when really it was shocking uh, for, I, I think for me and uh, the other sisters who were mm -hmm. Uh, in the position of teaching uh, the sisters there, or the, even uh, uh, teaching at the, the school with mm. the children, uh, because the question itself, it was uh, raising that red flag. Mm. Why are they asking this question? So we start uh, going through the Quran and the Sunnah and what, how the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to treat uh, his wives and, uh, and also daughters and women in general. Mm. So then the reaction of, of the sisters was very clear that this is not the way I was raised or understanding Islam and my understanding of being a good wife is to be obedient to my husband and whatever he asked me to do i have to do it and if i don't do it so i uh, uh, deserve to be disciplined mm -hmm. and the way of uh, disciplining me it depends on the husband so at that time uh, also, we started receiving some uh, stories. Mm. Uh, some of them, they would come to the mosque and saying, um, he threw things on me yesterday, that glass or this or that. He was very angry. It's just because he was very angry. So uh, I forgive him, no problem. So okay, but you have to protect yourself. Uh, how about the children? Mm -hmm. Uh, the children were watching you, they said, she said yes. And we have her children also at the school. So um, I uh, have my, um, my colleague also and my sister who was a counseling uh, and counselor and she works with uh, issues like this mm -hmm. and she knows exactly this is something serious and it requires some attention. Mm -hmm. So uh, at that time for us, of course, we had no uh, authority or anything to deal with this issue in any uh, uh, sense except to give her some advice. Um, 
uh, and one of the advices also we uh, I remember that we started telling them uh, let your husband go to the imam and talk with him so uh, and let the imam also understand your situation she said no 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 I don't want the the community to know about our uh, problems and issues and uh, they start talking about it and this is not uh, good for my family so we we approached the imam himself and in a, in a good way mm -hmm. that uh, uh, if you maybe start speaking about these issues uh, whether the khutbah uh, the friday sermon or mm -hmm. some other ways but at least just address this issue and at that time, I think uh, we received a positive, but also kind of passive mm -hmm. uh, at that time in the 19s, the end of 90s. Uh, but um, uh, then, of course, the stories continue. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, some of the stories even reached the level that, uh, for the wife to be beaten. And then the neighbors uh, will hear the the noise mm. and uh, from the uh, the wife and the children crying and screaming, and they called, of course, the police. And at that time, uh, the man <coughs> was taken by the police. Uh, the wife was in the hospital. The children were, of course, taken from their family yes. mm. uh, with the social service. So it was a serious mm. uh, issue. And um, uh, at that time also, uh, I will not forget to mention Sister Sharif al Khatib, mm -hmm. who really uh, had, uh, she listened. For us, it was informal. Yes. And informal is different than when mm -hmm. you have it as a formal set. So she did uh, the survey, mm -hmm. and she found like 10% of Muslim uh, families, uh, women and children, are really uh, facing that kind of uh, what it, it's called as domestic violence uh, at that time, and she raised uh, her hand and said she uh, she did so many workshops and uh, lectures uh, in different masajid and uh, uh, with the leaders of the community mm -hmm. just to warn them that it is a serious problem. Mm -hmm. Can you just thank you very much? Can you just explain what you consider as domestic violence because? so that uh, the uh, audience know. Sure, sure. Uh, any a kind of really physical abuse mm -hmm. uh, in, in uh, any way, hitting, beating, spanking, whatever they call it, uh, it, it consider as domestic violence. Emotional mm -hmm. and verbal uh, abuse, we call, uh, which is very clear in Surah Al-Hujurat for uh, 49, uh, 11 and 12, uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really uh, focus on this, you, you cannot hurt someone emotionally mm. by making fun of them or insulting them or make them feel low. And, and that's uh, for Muslims, I think, uh, we, we should take it seriously mm. because uh, this is something prohibited from Allah yes. subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, 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 even also part of the verbal uh, abuse, it's uh, suspicion, to be suspicious or, or jealous or something from your wife. Sometimes they spy on their wives because mm -hmm. they don't trust mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. yes. And they yeah. follow them everywhere. And mm -hmm. they have to call a hundred uh, times a day, yes. where are you? That's also considered by uh, uh, for this domestic violence is also sexual abuse, mm -hmm. financial abuse, mm -hmm. uh, when they uh, prevent them not to take uh, uh, any money or they uh, you have to stay and wait for me until I bring you <coughs> money or food. Okay. Uh, yeah. And also using children. Okay. Using children. Uh, that of course for the mother is very important for her her children. Yes. And they threaten them. Uh, oh, okay. I will yeah. take your yes. children yes. from you mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. don't do this. Mm -hmm. That's also considered as domestic violence. So it's a wide range of it is. Uh, abuses. It's yeah. Yeah. It is. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Amongst other things, uh, you are also working in the Peaceful Families uh, project. Um, could you uh, outline uh, the work of this project and the services it offers? And um, one more question. Um, how is it connected uh, to mainstream institutions, as you call them? Yes. Uh, for example, uh, uh, non-Muslim institutions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or um, uh, NGO, uh, NGOs, uh, etc. 
that maybe. No, mm-hmm. thank you. That's a good question. Uh, Peaceful Family uh, Project, of course, it started with uh, Sharif Al Khatib, uh, Rahmatullah mm-hmm. Alayha. Um, uh, she's the one in 2000, um, uh, I think, uh, as I said, after doing all her work and surveys. Uh, so she found that, okay, I have to, uh, you know, and, and, and this is um, a role model for Muslims because you have to stand. Uh, firmly against any injustice. Yes. So uh, if you believe that something is done as injustice, uh, if the world, the entire world is silent on this and you recognize that this is something uh, done against anyone unjustly, so you have to take that stand yourself and start something. Mm-hmm. And that's what she did. Uh, uh, she started this uh, kind of uh, small uh, project uh, and you can all, all, all find more about the history of, of this and how she started it. It was very simple, but working with other also non-Muslim institutions that they re- acknowledge and recognize also domestic violence in their own mm-hmm. uh, communities. Mm-hmm. So um, at that time, uh, uh, it was uh, really more focused on teaching, educating the Muslim community in the beginning. And uh, by this, because she already started before even the project, by uh, inviting the leaders, the imams, uh, anyone who's involved in the Muslim community. Uh, So it developed into also having not only one section of the uh, the training, mm-hmm. uh, but she would invite, uh, she noticed, of course, we have two two sides of the story with domestic violence. As I mentioned that the story of that Muslim woman who was mm-hmm. abused, she was taken by the police, she was taken to the court, uh, and also, of course, the hospital. Mm-hmm. So you, you see that the mainstream here, mm-hmm. you are dealing with all kinds of, of organizations. Mm-hmm. And all of them, if they are not educated, well educated about the Muslims mm-hmm. and what they uh, believe and mm-hmm. how they, uh, their cultures and all this, uh, they will be in trouble. Mm-hmm. And that's, uh, that's something also we, we uh, learned through that kind of experiences. Uh, so you have the legal issues, you have the health care also institutions, you have the social uh, service uh, institutions within the uh, mainstream. So uh, in this, uh, the uh, trainings or workshop or seminars that uh, was conducted at that time, uh, it approaches the Muslims and the non-Muslims, and then also some of the workshops will combine the two. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you will have uh, uh, the seminar to teach them about Islamic law sometimes, uh, the, uh, whatever that it's, it's important for the Muslims to yes. the, their diet, uh, the women with the scarves, the men, even shaking hands, all these mm-hmm. kinds of sensitive issues for the Muslims, for also the others to learn mm-hmm. about. And for the imams, or bring them to the table and telling them if someone comes with this issue, uh, how do you deal with it? Uh, it was in the beginning, since like uh, I'm talking about maybe 1990s and also 2000, until maybe 2006, uh, the reaction of the imams really was very limited in a positive way. Mm-hmm. It was very, uh, 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 the, the issue itself uh, it was taking uh, with doubts. Mm-hmm. Why, why should I do this? How do mm-hmm. I do it? Uh, and also, uh, it's still a new for them to combine this with the Islamic teachings while it's there. So what we did in 2003, uh, Selma Abu Jdairi and I wrote a book, What Islam Says About Domestic Violence. Mm-hmm. And we brought the model, the Quranic model, the prophetic model about dealing with domestic violence as oppression. It's not uh, Mm -hmm. domestic violence because uh, for them, I guess, they were taking it in a different way. Mm -hmm. So this Peaceful Families uh, project, the focus is really, it's how to educate and train uh, both. Now, after almost now 15 years, uh, uh, every year almost uh, uh, 30, 33, at least workshops are done 
uh, that's only the uh, official one. Mm. But of course, for me, uh, yes, I'm doing uh, other uh, stuff. It's not only with the peaceful family. So it's also to uh, that uh, it serves the same purpose. Mm. Imam Majid or the other imams who are working also with this, they, they do something else to uh, invite the imams and mm. leaders of the community to come. So uh, today we have so many uh, imams who are also joining the training sessions and the seminars so, uh, and also for the mainstream uh, judges, training for judges, mm -hmm. training for uh, uh, the uh, for the police, uh, trainings for the school mm -hmm. uh, school teachers, training for social service, uh, about and even for the hospitals for some of the um, people who are working with the Muslim community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's really. Um, um, a difficult topic, I think, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. um, you mentioned the challenge that Muslim women who decide to engage mm -hmm. against domestic violence are often labeled as feminists mm. and are not taken seriously. Mm. So how do you meet this challenge? It is difficult. Mm. It's not easy, and uh, especially be because really our intention it was to, we believe, and strongly, uh, and still uh, for me, I believe strongly that family, Muslim family, and the structure of Muslim family uh, is unique mm -hmm. in every aspect. And I believe also strongly that it should be the role model uh, mm -hmm. for humanity yes. uh, as, as an institute, because it, it has all elements uh, when we put them together in a, in a way as the Qur'an and as the Prophet himself really applied in his life uh, without maybe injecting so many cultural issues within the, the structure of the family, uh, you find um, really is a, a great model. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue is also for Muslims uh, uh, mixing and integrating culture with religion and you don't uh, uh, really sure where to have the line between the two and and people are really uh, uh, saying oh this is Islam or this is yes. uh, what we believe it's family and then what we are trying to do going back to the sources the mm -hmm. main sources to the quran itself and uh, to the sunnah of the prophet and try to read even the sunnah and the hadith of the prophets dealing with women issues with family issues uh, in the light of the quran and objectives of the quran mm -hmm. the quranic uh, the maqasid quraniya and all this uh, so our our goal is really how to build um, a family on the concept of teamwork mm -hmm. instead of hierarchy uh, uh, system or model that who's in authority, who's the uh, have the head of the family, who's this, who's that. Yes. But we are trying to go back to the values and principles that allows Muslims, men and women, to work together to build this uh, uh, healthy, strong uh, institution as the family institution, and uh, and also uh, uh, by by working it uh, as uh, I mentioned in the lecture about just uh, try to focus on the area of nine. 71 and 72, mm. awliya, and to be awliya, even this concept, it requires more work. Mm. So calling us feminists, yes. or, or calling us when they said label, it's labels, and this yes. is something that we have to pay attention in our community, because when you label someone and, and put them under that label, you prevent the community to benefit from those people. Yes. And in this case, this is not good for, and this is not part of the Quranic teachings or Quranic values. Whether you read it in Surah Al-Hujurat, you read it in Surah Al-Nur, you read it in Surah Al-Baqarah and the others, and or the practice of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when they said this, of course, people will, oh, so they are breaking up 
the families instead of helping. It's all about women, it's feminists, they, they don't care except about empowering women. Yes. and empower No, we are trying to bring <clears throat> balance to the family, mm -hmm. and that balance, we are not calling for the hierarchy to replace the model of patriarch mm -hmm. or uh, uh, men over women mm -hmm. or women over men. Yes. We are trying to have that we concept, yes. so we work as a team. So at the beginning, it's, it's really, uh, it was very hard, mm -hmm. very difficult. Uh, but uh, after that, it's just I think we took the, the model of all the prophets on the earth mm -hmm. and we said we have to stand up and show the community that's what, what, that's what we are doing yes. and that's what we care about. We have, alhamdulillah, so many uh, families, they came back together after counseling and after uh, good work with mm -hmm. them and now they understand uh, their uh, responsibilities mm -hmm. towards their children. And that's what we should uh, really present to the Western communities all over and to the world, I guess. Um, in this interview, you have mentioned the Imams several times, many mm -hmm. times. Um, and uh, in your talks, uh, in your speeches and lectures, uh, uh, you mention uh, the role of the Imams in countering uh, domestic violence. And as a former Imam, uh, I would like... Um, uh, especially uh, uh, to ask you uh, why uh, is it important to involve the Imams and what can they do? Mm. Um, as, as you know, I guess it is uh, the, if you look 20 years ago or even before that, maybe the Imams were, uh, and, and even if you compare it between the Muslim world and the Muslims in the, uh, in the um, as minorities in the West, mm. uh, the imams, of course, the role of imam in the Muslim world is much different yes. mm -hmm. than yeah. mm -hmm. the the role mm. of imam in, in uh, uh, Europe and America, and and uh, for that people uh, they uh, put them in a position of not only to lead the prayer, because usually in the Muslim world, it's just for you to go lead the prayer, That's right. give the sermon. <laughs> it's very easy. This, this, my, this is my experience it, also. Exactly. Yeah. So it's very easy. It's very simple. You go there, give your khutbah, alhamdulillah, and five prayers, and you're that's it, you're done. Yes. But um, the, the history of, of our communities yeah. in the West, it was different because, of course, as we said, the family started there. Now it's not only individuals who are coming to work or study and go back home. No, you, now you establish a community and you are not going back any, uh, anywhere because now your children, they are calling themselves as Americans mm. or Westerns and, and that's it. So with families, it means you are you're having more questions and challenges all over the place. And, and in this case, you need someone to answer the questions. So they started coming to the imams, consulting with them, and the imams are not trained. Not mm -hmm. only an Islamic way to answer as fuqaha or mm -hmm. jurists, to mm -hmm. answer the our difficult questions, mm -hmm. but also they, they don't know how to understand their own realities and, and culture. Yes. Yes. And That's so true. many of them, they were brought there because of their, uh, maybe because they read the Quran very well and their <laughs> voice is very beautiful. Yeah. So that's part of it. And they found themselves, no, yeah. that, that, that job requires more. Yes. And, uh, and of course, they had no idea how to deal with the issues. Yeah. So started answering questions in our own way and causing problems and problems with the, the community. Mm -hmm. So the community come back and said, wow, you know what you did? But, uh, now I'm divorced with my husband because uh, I, I followed your, your yeah. advice. Uh, or I'm in trouble with the, with the law because of your advice. Or yes. I'm this. And especially, I think at that time, you received some of, of the questions like 20, 25 years ago about um, some of the, the men will uh, have more than wives and the imam is the one who initiated or he, he certified that in, mm -hmm. in one paper mm -hmm. and with two witnesses and, and that's it. It's you done. have to, yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, to have. 
but it's against the law yes. and mm -hmm. the law of the land you have to deal with this and if it's against it he got in trouble mm -hmm. at that time they said uh oh that's that's really a big job mm -hmm. so yes. we need to find out a way how to get rid of all these issues yeah. so i guess um and and still we have some of the issues and mm -hmm. that's what i'm saying about the importance of training the imams about the reality about society about the culture they live in and also about even islamic law mm -hmm. and how to deal with this and that's why um, uh, I have to mention here the role of the scholars and thinkers, the Muslim thinkers, mm -hmm. for more than uh, over uh, 30 years or, or more. Uh, they started the fiqh for minorities and mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, that conversation. Uh, this reality is different than the Muslim world. Yes. This yes. reality right. is different yes. than this. Mm -hmm. So we need to ask the big questions and that big questions is about what does it mean democracy? What does it mean for us, the, the legal system? What does it mean for how to engage uh, our community, but without, of course, uh, violating your own uh, religion and deen? And, and it was really very helpful, at least to a certain degree, uh, to have that kind of conversation and also to lead the imams. But at the end, the imams themselves also they still need more training and more uh, understanding of both. Yes. Because mm -hmm. in some right. areas we find ourselves to this day mm -hmm. that that kind of mentality that is still there, they're pushing away uh, many of the youth mm -hmm. away from the masjid mm -hmm. because they, have, they, they still need more training mm -hmm. on counseling, education, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. How to deal with the uh, the youth uh, problems and mm -hmm. answer their challenges and questions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with the women challenges mm -hmm. and questions with the children themselves and with the scholars. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we still are working on this, uh, but uh, peaceful families and other projects that they are uh, trying to at least at least to touch the service just to give them kind of. Uh, understanding and by the way there is something uh, good I think started mm -hmm. this trend some of the imams now they are taking degrees on social service mm -hmm. on counseling great. Uh, mm -hmm. to learn more about their realities I guess mm -hmm. that's great <laughs> Thank you. good news Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So, um, you talked about some uh, misconceptions uh -huh. conceptions of uh, Muslims so mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to ask you mm -hmm about one of these misconceptions and those it is about sabr and patience um, for example women in problematic marriages are often told that they should be patient mm -hmm. so everything mm -hmm. will be fine yes. just do sabr practice sabr mm -hmm. what do you think on this about this the, this is also to continue the conversation yeah. about the imams mm -hmm. because uh, in so many ways it's uh, they ended up of course they, they ask to be patient and I as I said before uh, for the women themselves they were taught this mm -hmm. way yes so being patient for their understanding it means you have to be passive mm -hmm. passive in a way receive whatever that kind of abuse mm -hmm. uh, because it's part of that relationship and you are obeying God yes. so and in this case it's okay you're doing it so with the Imams when that lady comes to the Imam seeking his advice and his, his guidance and says uh, you know is the best for the family to be patient and even if she, uh, he throw things on me yes. well how can I just be patient yes. uh, he, he beat me and sometimes mm -hmm. even with marks mm -hmm. and something he said you know it's, it's he's angry because he's angry and all this so the reality is uh, no in the Quran the concept of sabr or patience is an active, uh, active concept. It mm -hmm. means patient, when you are patient, it means you have to uh, have that critical thinking. Mm -hmm. Patient is with everything. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when said, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ mm -hmm. So if you read this ayah by itself and contemplate the mm -hmm. ayah, really, it has... Um, uh, every word is a concept mm -hmm. and sta'inu here sta'inu it means it's like seek support mm -hmm. by 
going to prayer, the prayer here also is not passive. Mm -hmm. Prayer is active. Mm -hmm. And someone who are seeking the guidance of God, Allah, in this, it's active. Yes. Right? Yeah. And sabr itself, it means you have to be patient to, re uh, to receive wisdom. Yes. Not the opposite. Mm. Not is like, okay, I'm waiting for the dictator to kill me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and this is, it's okay because I'm not here. <clears throat> or I'm not standing against justice uh, or raising my voice because, oh, uh, not to be hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, you are hurt. Mm. And in this in position. And I think uh, that's what the Quran says, إِلَّا كَبِيرًا إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ And even the concept of khushu' most of the time we connected only with salah, mm. with the prayer, but the khushu' is people who are actively engaged with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, understanding these concepts. So the khasha is the one who's seeking guidance. In this case, for the domestic violence and this, the women should not, if she's patient, she should be patient to educate herself mm -hmm. about counseling. Emotional and verbal uh, abuse, it hurts the soul yes. and the heart. Mm -hmm. And if the heart is, is uh, uh, defected with, with these kind of things, you cannot forgive. You cannot feel uh, uh, secure. Mm -hmm. You cannot even deal with yourself. You, you start hating yourself. Yes. Uh, Self-esteem, of course, will be very low. So in this case, uh, what do you get from this? Is this the patience that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is seeking? No. Mm -hmm. So for we try also through the trainings to teach people, men and women both, yes. for the victims to seek counseling, therapy, uh, to uh, pray, mm -hmm. increase your prayer and connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The spiritual aspect is very important. Mm -hmm. And for also for men and abuser, they have to seek uh, counseling, uh, anger management, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. anger mm -hmm. management training uh, for mm -hmm. six months or more. They have to go with the imam to work with the spiritual aspects to increase their uh, good relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm and repentance, yes. and we use tawbah. So in the, this is the act okay. of patience. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, since several days you are in Germany, um, you uh, said in our talks, in our lectures, uh, in, your, in your lectures, uh, that you have uh, an impression uh, that the Muslim community in Germany is at a stage uh, where the American Muslim uh, community has been 15 years before. Mm -hmm. uh, drawing from your experience in America, um, what would you recommend as first steps in order to overcome the silence and the taboo which lays on this issue? What are the strategies and the practical steps Muslims in Germany should do, could do? Mm -hmm. Um, yes, uh, indeed, um, I noticed that with the, the students or with the audience, uh, it will, uh, of course, uh, it reminds me with uh, the beginning in the 90s and uh, 2000, when we used to go to any lecture or training sessions that we mm. used to do, and uh, the room expected to be full, but then it was empty, mm -hmm. and uh, empty only with the people who are active <laughs> in that work, yes. and most of the time are women. Mm -hmm. But uh, after a while, uh, it comes to really uh, for the people, first we have to educate the community. Mm -hmm. And um, I suggest that this is, uh, I will go back to the imams and the role of imams. The role of imams and the leaders of the community, the religious leaders of the community, is to, for them to learn more about uh, this issue. And not to uh, label this issue is only for uh, the West or this is feminist or something. No, this is uh, an issue that it happens uh, all across all uh, cultures and faiths. And mm -hmm. Islam came from the beginning, uh, the, the coming of Islam, it was to stop and prevent the domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Whether we call it domestic violence or oppression or yes. zulm or anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, so we're starting with the imams and with the imams to train them or to have changed that 
mentality about this. Then they start with the khutbah and khutbah, mm-hmm. the sermon, the Friday, mm-hmm. just to let them know, let the people, the public hear about this. Give them example of what is, as we said, what is uh, domestic violence? Mm-hmm. What does it mean? Uh, let them know about our collective or uh, understanding of family, Muslim family. Let them teach them that we should have uh, a perfect or excellent mm-hmm. uh, families. Mm-hmm. Have support groups. Start with support groups, small support groups among sisters, uh, also among the brothers, mm-hmm. because uh, men also, they need that kind of, of support, yes. uh, uh, emotional and physical and in every sense. And I think if we start with this, then, of course, you take the next steps. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the academia, of course, they can also, uh, we need this because that's what also we did uh, there in America to emerge the, uh, what we are doing, uh, such as your program, mm-hmm. and you invite the community to come to different lectures. Yes. Maybe you face in the beginning some kind of, of uh, resistance, mm-hmm. but it comes back and uh, let them uh, have both. Mm -hmm. academics and you have also uh, religious leaders Uh, but it's important also to let the the uh, mainstream uh, institutions Mm -hmm. and agencies Mm -hmm. who work with social worker and with schools with everything to uh, also be aware of this and we are working on it and we are trying Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's what uh, for the leaders and and khutaba and imams uh, they have to highlight this issue. We don't want to uh, our families that because God gave us uh, this uh, gift, mm-hmm. and it, we should take care of of the institution of marriage, the institution of a family, and even dealing with divorce. We have to be very careful mm-hmm. because this is something uh, that maybe it's a source of bulum mm-hmm. if we don't mm-hmm. follow the the. Uh, 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 the guidance of the Quran and Sunnah, mm-hmm. and and then of course every uh, I think every member of the community yes. should uh, stand for any. Uh, that's what we call it. Al Amr bil Maruf al Nahyan Munkar. We mm-hmm. mention it also. Is to uh, whatever there is wrongdoing, we have to stand strong and and tell them that this is not right. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. We You're wish welcome. you uh, success for your work. Thank, thank you. you very much for doing this uh, important you. work and thank you for the insights you gave us. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. Thank you.